Our speaker today spent the formative years of his career in contact centers, retail leadership, and serving as a volunteer in his local police force. In 2020, he broke out into a solutions consultant role in an AI tech startup, and he was selling complex technology into enterprise C-suite situations and managed to place over 200 opportunities with an annual recurring revenue worth $25 million into the sales funnel. Having realized that cold outreach just wasn't cutting it to reach the senior decision makers he wanted to, he found that building relationships through content was the way to reach his senior audience and drive revenue. He founded Javelin Content Management. He can show you how to turn 30 minutes of your time into hundreds of pieces of content. And he's presenting today content that builds credibility, authority, trust, and sales. Would you please give a very warm welcome to Paul Banks. Thanks very much. Okay, so I'm sure everybody on this call knows the feeling that I'm about to describe, whether you feel it now or whether it's something that you've previously experienced. I'm sitting at your desk on a Monday morning, it's three minutes past eight, and we're sitting there with writer's block. We know we need to write something for our social media. We know it's important to get out there and represent our personal brand. We know we need to drive business through our social media. And you're sat there and wondering what it is that I need to say today. Why does anybody care what it is that I've got to say? Your palms are starting to get sweaty. You might have a baby crying downstairs. The fingers are sat on the keyboard and you just sat there staring because you have no idea where to even start. Um, it's like trying to hit a target 30 yards away with a handful of gravel. It's really, really hard to start. And your internal monologue starts, I'm just not good enough. I'm not an expert. No one cares about what I have to say. You have to ask yourself, who is saying that to you? It's your internal board of directors. I have a good client who talks about this to some extent, is that inside each of us, we have a, a board of directors, the personality um, traits that make us up. And they're all good at some things. They're all bad at other things. And we need to be very mindful about who it is that's in charge at any one point in time. Who are these board of directors? Well, their imposter syndrome, their anxiety, their doubt, their fear, all of those, they're all your internal board of directors. They're there for a reason. And they can either help you or hinder you and depend on whether they're in the driving seat or not. We need to, first of all, get ourselves in a mental place to control those people um, so that we can be productive and effective and utilize their skill sets as we would if we were in a real business in the real world and we had a board of directors sat there and we were the CEO of that business. We'd want to utilize the skills and expertise that those different personalities bring to our table. And while you're sat there, you then start to think about all the other things that you should be doing as a leader of your business. You should be bringing sales in. You should be talking to your accountant, perhaps. You should be answering all those emails that came in over the weekend. And you get distracted and decide to come back to it later. But let's be honest, we never do. Hello, procrastination, my old friend. I'm no different to any of you. I feel exactly those same things, even now, running a business that delivers content for other people. So what's the answer? What if I told you during the next 20 minutes that it's possible to build enough content, you can arm an entire business, not just a single person, across every social media channel you have. And all that stems from just 30 minutes of your time. And the surprise in that, the surprise in that idea, and I'll walk you through how to do that in a moment, the surprise is that you are the answer, whether you believe that or not. And it can be done within 30 minutes of your time each week as a starting point. So the core problem that we face is that 82% of CEOs and business leaders admit they don't have a scalable content strategy. What do I mean by that? I mean that they'll go to the desk and they'll write out something every day or they'll batch create some content once a week. But when somebody asks them to step away from the desk for a week or how do we filter that down to the rest of the team or how do we make that more cohesive, I don't have a clue because they just go at the desk and write what their inspiration was each day. It's like trying to build a house without a blueprint. We also believe that brands and logos and polished videos are the way forward. That's how we've always done things since the 1970s. Brands, you know, when Nike built their brand, it was based on polished videos, superstars, logos. Those days are gone. What we now need to get to is a place where we combine our personal brand 
our experience, our authority to talk on a given subject and attach it to our business brand. And it doesn't matter whether you're an enterprise business or whether you're a solopreneur, part-timer, a charity, it all works exactly the same. We don't buy business. We don't buy brands. We buy people. We buy based on relationships. Everybody here today is here because they want to network. Networking is relationships. So whether you feel that you have something to sell or not, whether you're even if you're just looking for a job, your personal brand is how you achieve that. You're selling yourself. Let's think about chat GPT. Everybody talks about chat GPT. It's a tool I use a lot. But compare that to your brand. If you compare that to your brand, you can, you know, it's great at what it does. It does a set given tasks. It'll do lots of things very, very well, but it's got no real substance or experience. If you put a chat GPT post out on LinkedIn, I guarantee I will spot it and comment on it because I do that all the time. I love winding people up who just think it's acceptable to just regurgitate what they've entered into chat GPT. But the point behind that is it's just not tangible. It's not credible. Well, what is? you you're credible you're tangible whether you believe it or not the problem we have is we prioritize things in our business work that give us wins today that's how we're conditioned these days so the things for the endorphin rush how am i going to win today how am i going to drive more leads today how am i going to win more business today we don't think about what's going to happen in six months time but we should be thinking about what's happening in six months time because six months time will get here faster than we think it will and unfortunately for us, when that six months gets here, we still haven't made a start on the long-term plan. So we're still at square one. We've got to stop focusing on the endorphins and the quick wins sometimes, not all the time, because business right now is important. I understand that. But there's a behavioral science principle in there around we will always favor what is, what is right in front of us right now. And it's really hard to prioritize what comes down the line. And we're conditioned to think that way every time we pick our mobile phone up, for example. Um, you know, it craves our attention. It sends us notification after notification. Unfortunately, that short-term view doesn't deliver consistent business results. We know those consistent results are out there because we see people around us all the time who are accessing those consistent results. How? Build it before you need it. This is the fundamental mistake that most businesses make. We think about the short term all the time. We very rarely put any effort or time into the long term. There's a great example of that, uh, you know, in the, in the phrase, the, the best time to plant an orchard was 20 years ago. That's why you haven't got fruit in your garden right now. The second best time to plant that orchard is right now, today. So that's what I want to plant within you guys today as well. You listen to this story is this is entirely possible to do. You've just got to have the faith that you can deliver consistent leads over the long term by sticking with building your personal brand bit by bit. How do I know this works? I started out, as, as we've already shared, about four years ago, leaving corporate retail. I'm not a salesperson per se. I've got no sales training. I'm not a marketing person. I've certainly got no marketing training. And I'm quite proud of that, if I'm fair. What I have learned over 15 years of working in the police force whilst working in retail environment is how people's brain works. I'm curious about people. But still, I'd spent most of my career in a very sheltered environment in corporate life. And now all of a sudden I was being asked to sell to enterprise businesses into the C-suite and directors and heads of people who I've previously been scared to even talk to. On top of that, it's a complex solution, conversation analytics. Most people who I'm talking to today won't even know what that is. I don't blame you. It took me nearly three months to understand what the product was. But we managed to sell it. How do we do that? We did it with a narrative. So when I first joined the business, everybody wanted me. There was a lot of pressure on. Everybody wanted me to do cold outreach. And cold outreach, for everybody here, is absolutely part of your market mix. You should be doing that cold outreach. Because if you play the numbers enough, you will get wins from it. And there will probably be short-term wins. So that's what everybody needs to be doing, some of that, in order to benefit their business. What we did differently was we created podcasts. We did a podcast on a, on a Monday that we released that was a personal type podcast with the CEO. We did another one on a Thursday that was a LinkedIn Live. And we interviewed guests, lots and lots of industry guests. And that gave us access to their network and that did us some favors. But actually what we realized was there was much more audience to be reached here. 
we were starting to build some trust we were starting to show ourselves as the experts because look how can we have access to this guy this lady these people if we're not in turn credible these people are coming to speak on our show so it lent itself towards that it's not the only way of doing that by the way long form content on video is a beautiful way of capturing your thoughts your experience and your knowledge in order to transfer it to others nobody's going to watch the long form content watch this space what we did though was we turned it into micro moments so that long form content that 30 minutes of video of the podcast of of interviews with other people of chats internally between us we turned those into 25 or 30 short 30 second 60 second 90 second clips and we posted about each of those moments on social media. I was writing for four LinkedIn accounts at the time. What was the outcome of that? What, what did people take away from, from us doing that? Well, first of all, they wrongly assumed that we were a much bigger business than we were. We were nine employees. And I had enterprise class businesses come into us telling us they thought we have been around for years because the volume of content we put out on LinkedIn. It's not just about volume, though. Anybody here will tell you, quality trumps quantity what i brought to the table with with what i was doing was quality and quantity if you can combine those two there is very few people doing that that is the thing that really started to separate us out and people start to associate personalities and people and faces with our brand and we became well known and as a result of that as as we've already discussed i managed to put over 200 opportunities into the funnel for that business which was worth 25 million arr so that's recurring revenue to so 25 million every year if they'd managed to convert that over the whole thing. I had no training, I had no experience and no education in sales or market. I did things my own way. I learned it from the ground up and I experimented. How does all that work? Why, why did that work for us? Well, for a start, some of you will be sat there thinking, well, that was enterprise class business. It was complex technology. It was senior C-suite. We don't sell to those people. That's fair. I now do the same thing with Javelin content. I set up business in February. By April, I had to go away and buy a CRM solution to manage the amount of leads that were coming in. I'm not saying everybody's going to manage to bring leads in that quickly. I had been networking solidly for three or four years, and I leveraged a lot of my relationships. However, now that I'm eight months in, I can tell you, I still get leads coming inbound. I get lots of referrals. And the reason why I get all those referrals and lots of inbound business is what I'm about to describe now. Short form content, content where people are visible, where your personality as a business leader gets out there in front of other people is building relationships first. And it's a one to many relationship. It's me showing you who I am, what I do, what I don't do, and importantly, why I do it before I've even spoken to you. If you're on the receiving end of that and you're a potential client, the last thing you want is me dropping in your inbox and pitch slapping you with what I do how very much what everybody else does, how boring. I'm just going to skip over that unless there's something in there. And you're constantly fighting to find something that makes you stand out from everybody else that's in there. My clients often get a message from me that is, come and have a look at what we do. I'm sharing everything on social media. I'm going to tell you all of my secrets because if you can do it yourself, you should be doing it yourself. And if you can't, then you can come to us and we can talk and hopefully we'll be a good fit. Can't promise it, but we'll see storytelling is how humans have communicated for thousands of years i mentioned nike earlier on nike have evolved their their marketing way beyond where they started they now train their leaders in storytelling the state of the current linkedin box in your news feed is just terrible like i i struggle with it sometimes if i'm honest 99 percent of people just don't post anything at all so if you post just one thing once a week you're in the top one percent of our linkedin users that's a lot of people that you've just cut out the loop. However, long form content on its own, long form videos, podcasts, webinars, interviews, those things, people won't take the risk on watching them. They don't want to watch them because time is valuable. We can't get time back. It's one thing we can't buy. So you cut it down into short content, clip it up. And technology and experience will let you do that effectively. So there are technology out there. And I will share with um, the team afterwards exactly what tools I use to do what I do and I would love for you all to go away and try using some of it and let me know your outputs I'll put my contact details in the chat if you do create something out of it I would love to hear about it please do message me send me the send me the link and I will absolutely engage I've got 20,500 followers 
I would love to engage with your content and, and share some love. So what we do is we take that long form video and turn it down into 30 to 90 second reels. Um, the point of that is twofold. One, it gets your video in front of everybody else, your face, so they're familiar with you. But it also allows you a topic that you can write text-based posts to go with it. No longer are you sat at the desk thinking about what you need to write about. You've got a topic. It's a small topic. You can now add your experience and opinions and engage people around that topic. And each day you can just go back into your library of content, pick something else out and ask somebody about it. The beauty of this now is you then take that content and you do it in two different color schemes. Guarantee you post it two weeks apart. Nobody will even know that it was the same content you put out two weeks ago because it's a different color. Humans are very forgetful, especially with the amount of content that's on LinkedIn. The only person that gets bored with your content is you. You can then output that with the right technology in three different formats. So no matter which social media platform you want to be active on, you've used that one piece of content and you're active across all social media if you want to be. Not everybody wants to be and not everybody's suitable for every kind of social media platform, but you should be able to test it if you want to. And you can create quartz images quite easily from that. So, you know, everybody can get access to Canva. It's not very expensive. You can use the, the transcript from your video to find the quartz that are punchy, that are usable, that you can put out there. And everybody worries, oh, it's a bit cringy quoting myself. Depends on how you do it. If you're quoting yourself as an expert and, and this is how the industry rolls, yeah, that's a bit cringy. But if you're talking about things that are real, things that have happened to you, then people accept that and actually creates quite a lot of engagement. And you can also turn all of those into audiograms where it's rather than your video on the, on the screen, you maybe have your avatar on there, a waveform that catches people's eyes and the karaoke style text so that people are just still drawn to it, stops the scroll. It's different to what everybody else is doing. And before you know it, you've now turned your 30 minute video file into over 200 digital assets, all themed and on target for your content strategy. What's more, you can now use ChatGPT to help take that, simmer it down and turn it into the basis for blogs, newsletters and alternative versions of your posts. Please don't post from ChatGPT straight to LinkedIn or anywhere else. That's not what it's for. What it can do is refine content that you've already created or generate the basics for you to then refine, but never post it out straight. But all this content that you've now created features you. The time poor an incredibly experienced and passionate leader, the best person to sell your business. You on your own, you're not scalable and you need more you. That's what short form content does for me. It educates your audience. In this world, in business, we can be one of three things. We can be first to the table. That's really hard to do. It's very rare, happens once in a lifetime for every industry. We can be best at what we do. That is really expensive. Apple, Microsoft, Nike, but what everybody can be is different. And it doesn't mean you need to put big clown shoes on and walk around making a, making a ridiculous scene of yourself. What it means is you need to be very able to articulate why you do what you do, what you do and what you don't do so that you can stand apart from your competition, who by the way, probably aren't using video, who probably aren't posting on LinkedIn at all. All of a sudden you're different, you're standing out. Make sure you cover why you're credible in your field i was going to say expert i don't believe anybody's really an expert we're all in learning always learning but why are you credible in your field why should they come to you instead of the competition what's your story what's led you to be good at what you do and what happens is all the time your ideal audience who probably don't follow you yet will find you because now and again you'll pop up in their feed and you'll resonate your audience that currently follows you they're your champions Absolutely keep them. They're a wonderful breed of people and they will refer you work all day long if they know what you do, why you do it and how you do it. Your ideal audience are the people that will come watch your content. They won't like what you do. They won't comment on what you do, but they will direct message you when the time is right and they need your services if they know what you do and they will be your clients. But only when they hit the buying window. What's just happened there is you've shortened the deal cycle for whatever it is that you sell, your products, your services, whatever, because you've allowed them to do their research themselves in their own calm, tranquil setting. You've allowed them to build trust with you because they've learned a lot about you. You've given a bit away. They understand you and they've made up their own mind before they've even come to you. 
And the outcome of that is that your win rate should go up massively because you've got rid of all the tire kickers who thought you might have been right for them, but they couldn't find all the right information out there. So they're going to book a time slot with you and, and have a chat. You think they're a lead. Three months later, they drop out because you weren't never a fit in the first place. If you've shared what you don't do as well as what you do and who you're not a good fit for as well as who you are, those people should, if you're doing your job right, not appear as often. And when they do appear, make sure you find out why they appeared and create some content about why they weren't the right person for you. Don't name names. But what's now happened is the people who should be your clients have been able to find you. They've built trust, they know you, and they like you. And you're top of mind because you're always in their feed. Nobody else is producing content the way you do. Boom, job done. So the results are simple. When the time's right, your ideal audience is going to come inbound. Make sure you measure where they've come from. Find out where they first found out about you. Don't ask them how they got to your website. Find out the first time they heard about you. Can guarantee it comes from your content if you're doing it right. From eight months of trading from a standing start for Javelin, I have no website, no SEO, no pay per click. I've never run a business before. Next month, we're going to break £10,000 MRR with a solid pipeline of future leads to upsell, cross sell new clients and new partners, all because of two things me, my team, and content. And that's what I've built the business around. Imagine the impact on your called outreach then. Instead of having to go out there and ask people if they're interested in your services, all you need to do is message them and say, hey, come and have a look at what we do. If it's helpful, reach out. If it's not, I hope we help you. So to just quickly summarize now, back to where we were at the beginning of this story, we were sitting at our desk, suffering writer's block. It was eight, eight minutes. It was three minutes past eight. Sweaty palms. Baby's crying downstairs, still crying, by the way. Fingers on the keyboard, staring at that keyboard, feeling a bit sick. And now we're sitting back at our desk, relaxing, knowing that we have all the content we'd ever want to use in a library ready to go. We just need to pick a piece, write our, opini our opinions and experience on it and post it out. Job done. And if you do have a team of junior members, which some of you may, they're gaining reputation by using that video content that references you and your credibility to leverage their own. We started this journey with a target and some gravel. You've finished it with an athletic body, a javelin in your hands, and the ability to throw it faster, harder, and better than the competition. If you want to learn how to do all these things, come and follow me on LinkedIn, or YouTube, or Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, because I'm there pretty much single-handedly, because that's what it gives you the ability to do. Thank you very much for your time. I hope it's been useful. Anybody wants to reach out and ask me questions, absolutely feel free. I am here to help. Well, thank you so much, Paul. That was fabulous. You're welcome. Thank you. And I wasn't counting, but I think there wasn't a single ah or um in the whole talk. <laughs> that that <laughs> is in and of itself very extraordinary and very impressive. Good Toastmaster. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, uh, the content of your presentation was awesome as well. And uh, I really learned a lot. I, I'm just uh, so impressed with what you've uh, managed to do and what you've managed to share. My background on Zoom has changed to a doubling up of a certificate of appreciation that we have for you. We'll not limit this to the background of the Zoom. We'll uh, post it on social media and I'll also get a copy to you to use as you wish. Do we have any questions for Paul or comments? So Eric, what is your question or comment for Paul? Um, well, hey, Paul, nice to meet you. Uh, game recognizes game. I like what, what you uh, spoke about. Uh, I actually told everybody in the chat to put a one if they're liking what you're saying and it resonates with them. You know, put a put a two if they speak. And I was just kind of like reading the audience for you so you can go up and you can you can look at that. You're welcome. And uh, I'd love to connect with you, man. You know, put your LinkedIn in the in the chat and, and uh, chat a little bit more about your expertise and, and mine and, and see how we can work with Randy and, and how we can all uh, benefit each other. But I I like I said, game recognizes game. You're you're on point. Thanks very much, Eric. Yeah, my details are in the chat there. But anybody, like I say, and if you do go away and create some content based on what we've discussed today, I would love to see it as well. Um, please do tag me in it or send me a direct message with the link. Um, I'm open to engaging across all of it. I'll be looking for your LinkedIn or Instagram. We'll connect. Good job. Well, thanks for your positive comments and feedback, uh, Eric. Just for everybody's benefit, Paul Banks' link on LinkedIn can be found as an integral part of the event post for this event, but we'll also be sending out the entire Zoom chat from today's event 
in a post event message. Also, Paul was kind enough to allow us to record his presentation. So after I have a chance to edit it, and I won't have to edit out any other elements because Paul had none. <laughs> but uh, we'll uh, we'll send out a Google Drive link because the file size is too large to send it out as an actual file. But we'll send it out in a post event message as well. Give us you know kind of a week or two because we've got to of course get the next show for November 9th on uh, underway and things like that. But nonetheless, uh, you'll be receiving I think a bit of information that will be valuable to you to follow up with people to uh, connect with Paul Banks and uh, perhaps spark a new direction for your career or business. Okay, so uh, Kent, nice to see you. We haven't seen you for a while. Uh, what's your question yeah. comment for Paul? Hi all, Bismarck's, uh, especially the local Winnipeg ones. Uh, Paul, really appreciate your presentation. I have to say, when I looked at your LinkedIn ad that you had there, the way it popped, I, did, I, I commented to you and said, man, that's the best ad I've ever seen. So just to clarify what I would do, and now I'm a contract salesman for a solar company. I don't own the company, but I, I work on commissions. So I would send you a 30 minute blurb about what I do and how I do it. And then you make the post for me. And then the sub question to that is, what's it gonna cost? Uh, I know it's, there's various ranges, but you know, nothing in the world is free, especially not when it's really good like this. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a good question, Ken. It's a good question. It's a little bit different for everyone. So. In, in essence, you know, the way I generally work with businesses is that we'll set up some regular content. So they'll maybe get something sent over to me once a month and it'll be, you know, usually their podcast or, or webinar or something similar that they want to have chopped up on a regular basis. Um, sometimes we'll do two, three or four of those a month as well. And then, yeah, we, we turn that into the digital library for you. And if you then want us to write LinkedIn posts, specifically LinkedIn, um, then we'll we'll absolutely take that on board as well. We do do other social media, but it's not me that does that because I ain't down with the cool kids. Um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a LinkedIn fan, and 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 I'll stay in my zone. Costs tend to range anywhere from about five hundred dollars a month through to about three thousand dollars a month or thereabouts, depending on what what it is that you want to do and how often you want to do it. It's pretty bespoke. We've got done for you service packages. Um, but we'll mix and match those and adjust them so that they're just the right for you and your budget. So feel free to reach out and grab some time. We can have a we can have an offline discussion about how it works specifically for you, Kent. No problem at all. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. No problem. Well, thank you for your uh, questions, uh, Kent, and for your responses, Paul. Is anybody there unfamiliar with how to raise the hand digitally that would like to comment or question our presenter? I will drop into the chat for you all as well, the links for the platforms that I use to do what I do. So some of those will be familiar for some of you, others won't so much, but I'll pop those in there and then they'll obviously come out in the um, the comments for everyone as we go along. That would be wonderful. Paul, with your permission, perhaps I'll even incorporate those into the post event message rather than having people have to dig through the chat to find them, I'll yeah. put them more prominently in the post event message. Absolutely. No problem at all. By the way, I want to thank Paul. And I actually want to thank, first of all, Steve, Mr. Pineapple Matthew, for referring Paul to us. Uh, he's in our event today, but isn't able to participate in a proactive way because he's got something else happening in the background. But thanks, Steve, for doing that. And Paul, thank you for stepping in on short notice. Basically, it was kind of a surprise in the sense that the originally scheduled speaker uh, became ill and wasn't able to... Uh, uh, fulfill his originally scheduled commitment. And so Paul was kind enough to step in on short notice. So we greatly appreciate that. And uh, I haven't got the final numbers yet, but I think we've had a well-attended event. It's got to be up, up there among the top events we've had. So it's been a tremendous experience. W wonderful working with you, Paul. Wonderful to meet you today on video. So I thank you so much again. No, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to everyone. And thank you for being a wonderful audience as well. It's been uh, it's been an interesting networking event, certainly uh, one of the larger events that I've been to. So thank you for the opportunity to, to come and add value to everyone. You are so very welcome. Ron, perhaps you could provide your comments on uh, Paul's presentation. Well, as usual, I'm flabbergasted. You know, <clears throat> as they say, the cream rises to the top, Paul. That was absolutely astounding. I've uh, got a couple of pages of notes here, and, and I love you reiterating that, you know, build it before you need it. You know, it's it's the old analogy. If you if you plant a tree today, you won't see it 
but in 20 years time, it'll be full grown. So that's what we need to do. We have to be a little further, reaching out a little further, looking out a little further. Are you in business for a year, two years, or is this going to be your career? And start building and surrounding yourself with mastermind people. And I, I love the fact that, you know, you too believe in building relationships, storytelling, as soon as I came out of broadcasting and got into sales, I began to realize I was doing it right because as a broadcaster, you're telling stories all the time. So I had a lot of fun with that. Um, you know, I, I just wish you well. I, I'm so glad that you came on today. And as you said, you know, people will contact you because they know you, like you, and trust you. And I just want to say thanks again for coming on with us today, sir. More than welcome. More than welcome. Thanks for your time, Mom. And just one side comment i'd like to welcome debbie small who is actually from australia and uh, she i think it's four in the morning is it? oh no no by now it's five in the morning isn't it debbie it is five in the morning yes from melbourne australia and thank you so much randy for the beautiful invitation and it's lovely to meet you all and that was absolutely a brilliant talk so thank you so much absolutely you're so welcome so basically uh Debbie is is a trooper. She books business appointments at three in the morning, goes to networking events at four in the morning. <laughs> so hopefully some of you will choose to connect with her because she's made of stern stuff, as they say. So uh, also like to welcome uh, Shelly uh, Singh, who I had the pleasure of uh, connecting with yesterday. Uh, she's going to be our featured speaker in about a year. That's not me putting her off. That's because we're booked solid for a year, actually. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Shelly. How are you? Thank you. Yes, nice, to, nice to see you in our event. And yeah. even though you joined us a little bit late, uh, you'll be receiving the recording of the presentation and the questions and answers and things like that. So that's still going to come to you. And as will everybody else, all the attendees here today will receive that. So I guess uh, I'll just have to wrap things up. So I hope to see you all in future events. Thank you all for attending today. Thank you, Ron, for co-hosting as always, doing a stellar job. Take care, everybody. We'll see you all, I hope, soon.